Welcome to API Days Helsinki. We have here the identity track uh, slash API management, and we have uh, Patricia Lara uh, talking about identity management. But you, before I let you kind of go ahead, you had something you wanted to share as experience about all this remote work. I mean, it's familiar to you personally, but what happened in the company? Hi, so thank you for having me. Welcome everyone. So first I would like to share my personal experience. Um, I was used already to work sometimes on a remote environment, but of course going fully or remote uh, overcomes with more challenges. And as a company itself, uh, being a health company based more on production, it was a challenge to our company to suddenly move everything to remote. Uh, so we have um, our offices mainly, the main headquarters is in Germany, uh, and we have a, a big uh, uh, part here in Spain, in France, in Italy, which was in Europe uh, the, the most areas affected as the same, for example, in China. We do have presence in the China. So the areas that were actually most affected were areas that affected to our company. So we had to do some kind of uh, a very fast uh, then adoption to be able to continue because our products are of high demand at this time. So we need to ensure the continuity and be able to maintain ourselves safe uh, as employees. So we had to do a quick adaption for uh, allowing everyone to connect from home. It was a challenge and the first times, uh, the first days, I think it was a challenge for everyone to adapt to connect remotely, uh, going from face-to-face -face meetings to suddenly having all in virtual, uh, using the technologies to connect to your colleagues, maintaining the contacts with uh, our customers, which are hospitals and healthcare is exactly the ones you cannot visit at this moment. And for us, the, the digital and the technology has played a big, big important part on this one to allow us to maintain the production, the contact with the clients and uh, to continue uh, being able to be safe, but continuing to be able to um, provide to our customers. That's super interesting. I mean, you are kind of a digital company, but with a physical <laughs> kind of exactly. impact on there. Okay, but hey, yes. I will let you go ahead with this interesting topic of identity management and digital transformation. And off you go, Patricia. Thank you. So I would like to present uh, the identity management road to the digital transformation at Hartman. I would like to give you a bit of a glance of what Hartman is. So as I told you, uh, we have our headquarters in Heidenheim, quite in Germany, central Germany, and the company is uh, more than 200 years old. We were founded in 1818. We have presence in more than 30 countries around the world, but our products are actually available in around 100 countries to a network of distributors. So Hartman is a leading international manufacturer of the medical and hygiene products. Uh, we have uh, around 12,000 staff worldwide and generate sales of 2.2 billion. And as I said, uh, with a wide range of user-friendly products and customized service. Uh, our divisions are mainly four areas. So we have the eye continence uh, management. Uh, we produce the skin friendly products that are easy to use, comfortable to wear. And our range is sufficiently wide to be something to fit to everyone. Uh, so we have for the, for, the, for the adults and the skin care and uh, for every need that it's for men and women with specific products. Other area that we have is the risk prevention, single use high quality product solutions, uh, predominantly designed for operating theaters, but they are used to in words and they allow to reduce the preparation time and make fewer mistakes and allow more treatments and surgeries. We have wound management that we address today's wound related healthcare and we have products ranging from traditional compress to bandages to modern wound care offerings such as hydrotherapy range. And then we have the our area of disinfection. Uh, so I think it's a, a wide product at the moment and with a very high demand. Uh, we produced over 400 products for hand surface instrument disinfection and cleaning, skin care, and skin antiseptics. This includes the sterilium. I think it's one of the most uh, used products at the moment worldwide and all ranges, not only for the healthcare facilities, but actually for all the customers at the moment. So all the people at the moment. And this includes the sterilium, which is the leading skin friendly hand disinfectant hand brand and the world first marketed alcohol based rub in product available. 
And uh, this allows us to be to have uh, disinfected products which are safe and effective and can be used again on the day to day and in outbreak situations like the one we're living at the moment. So on our path to going further, uh, we want to go further in health and we want to go further to e-health. And we want to combine the technology to improve and reach our customers. And the connectivity is our main conductor. So the consumers are increasingly expecting the same digital experience in all aspects of their lives. So in this case, even in healthcare. So it's important to our consumers to be able to, be able to manage their own health. Consumers would be happy today to have health data accessible through their smartphone, through their devices, to the online uh, access, uh, through the different types of access. And the robotics and the AI can assist us in reaching faster and further. But this concerns, this raises concerns too. Raise concerns for consumers, for the privacy and security issues, and actually raise concerns for doctors, where the accuracy of the data is becoming too dependent on the AI but it's too important to you. In a time like today, for example, it's very important that we can use technology to connect, but being secure and being sure that this data is secure and accurate. I'm gonna give you a specific example in this case uh, at, that we have at Hartman, uh, where we are transforming the process exactly with these technologies. And it's uh, one of the examples that I would like to give to you today. So um, today, the supply chain for hospitals and care facilities, it's a huge process cost associated with the supply chain. So to order a syndical medical property, it's approximately uh, $100. And around 60% of these orders are processed manually. As you can imagine, this has a very high process cost. So the solution we present is the smart logistic and fulfillment using the IET and AI technologies. So combining data from population, weather, epidemic, that it's collected by the AI and do with the data analyst, analytics, uh, we can predict the need of these products. So we have uh, more than 7,000 sensor box installed in the healthcare facilities that, that uh, control the stock and uh, do the automatic replenishment and real-time traceability. Uh, so if the product is removed, for example, from the shelves, it is registered and when reaching a predefined level and based on this AI technology and this uh, predictment, uh, they can start the order process. This leads to cost efficiency, reduction of the process of ordering, the costs for the customer, optimizing the supply chain, manufacturing process and improvement of forecast and the quality processes through the AI. So um, what this means is that we are using technology innovation. What this means is that we apply a new technology to the current business process on a way of doing things. By doing this, uh, the accounts, uh, which is the identity, uh, needs to be created, of course, for the supplier portal. So what we have implemented at the moment uh, with technology innovation is that the customer external account is managed by IT in a first point and then export it to the consumer customer portal to enable the access. The account management is then done by the Hart Hartman EM team. And we have to do a lot of manual tasks triggered by the support tickets, by our sales department, by supply department, uh, and any modification unlocks password resets management then has to be done internally by the IT. So it's a lot of steps done, but it did allow us a quick implementation that solved the problem with the technology uh, but maintaining the old way of doing things. The big advantage of this is the quick results uh, with a long time stagnation, but we do have a quick win and a quick result. I believe that actually technology innovation is the path to the digital transformation. It's not a blocker. So we implement a quick solution to have a fast solution and implement it that it will allow a quick win. And that leaves you more time to implement a solution that will actually require more time but lead to a long-term benefit. So I do believe that they complement each other. So in a digital transformation, we're not only using the technology to do it the, the same things in a different way, but you are actually adapting the new technology from a new way of doing business. So what this means, for example, in this specific example, is that the accounts for the supply portal 
Instead of being created by the IT department with tickets in the middle, requests by sales and supply chains, the customer external accounts are actually created and managed by the, by the customers. Or you can always, for example, an example is designate a customer. If you have uh, one specific facility where there's gonna be a lot of accounts, you designate one customer to manage their own account. And then the access is actually given by the, the customer itself and they actually do their own account management. So they being doing the modifications, permissions, access, uh, disabling the access directly in the portal. And no manual task is done by the IT. It is a slower implementation, but it takes full advantage of the new technology and allows a new way of doing the things. Uh, with this, you have slower results because it's gonna take more time to implement, but it actually gives you a long-term benefit. So in the path for innovation to transformation, I believe then the road to go is for YAM to SIAM meaning that we are going from the traditional identity and access management to go further to the customer identity and access management. Of the roles for the external identity types cannot be defined in the same way that you have the internal roles. The internal roles are depending on the organization data, employment definitions, HR data, that it's actually coming through the system. For actually doing for the customer, you need to have a more flexible distributed approach. It's necessary to consider other ways to manage the external identities. Uh, and one example is implementing self-service, third-party registration, lightweight authentication, and the federation services. With these steps, what you will have is that the external users uh, are gonna be managed by themselves. I would like to give you a bit more in depth of how this is done, but most I first would like to tell you the benefits of going through this road. So the benefits of going to, from YAM to SIAM is that you get a 360 view of your customers by centralizing the user data from different applications instead of silo data that can lead to missed opportunities or upsells. This means that you have accounts in multiple systems and with very difficult management. And by doing the customer identity access management, you have a 360 view because you can see exactly what is registered where, but you're still allowing him to, to do it. So with the self-service portal, you can tailor the access to the customer and provide a better user experience. So I would like to now show you how to get it, so how to achieve it. So for me, I think the first thing you need to do is focus on the design or your customer. Don't use the same design for all. So you need to focus exactly what is the need of this specific customer and design it uh, with the customer at focus. So in our case, if we are designing something for a healthcare facility, we need to be specific to for what it's easier for them to use. Uh, User-friendly with image of the products with the specific information exactly what they need uh, to make sure that they have the correct information and easy to use through a self-service. Enabling the customers to manage their own accounts, it's a big saving on time. And we know that in healthcare, and uh, it's really important to time, you need to be able to react fast. You need to have the fast solutions, but you need to have the correct solutions. It needs to be safe. It needs to be safe from a health point of view, but also needs to be safe from an IT point of view. So you need to activate protections. The way you activate the protection through these connections is to two-factor multi-authentication or OAuth to zero authorization framework. Uh, you need to be able to secure your network too. So you need to present a solution that it's able to give access to your internal system, but at the same time protect this internal system. Our chosen way to make this connection is through the API. The API is the best solution in our case because it allows a double, um, a double layer. So the first layer is the API itself designed to enable the business and allowing to connect to the client. But with the API, what you can do is that you can actually tailor this access. So on the customer side, you can have a view that it's customized and done to the client, but on the other side, on the management interface, it's designed in a way that you need. So with the API, because you are calling the API, making a call whenever you need to do something, either is creating an identity, managing the identity, managing the roles, with the API itself allows you to 
tailor the access and customize it to the client, but being able to manage the identities the way that you need to be done because it's called through an API. Uh, so this is basically our solution and our way of doing things because it will allow a connection that it's secure, that enables business, that allows this uh, tailored publication layer that can be created and with access in the secure way. With the API, you can then put all the protections that you need and you can separate the interface uh, from the client that the identity and access management, so the management of the identities uh, to adapt to your, uh, your own identity and access management tool. So this is, uh, I think, basically the information. So a first step from going from um, to digital, so the road to digital with the identity management and focusing more from a customer perspective, allowing to give the solution needed with the technologies as we have. And this way connecting the applications that, for example, the CRM applications that we have and connecting the CRM with our identity access management tool. So that is my presentation. <laughs> so uh, if you do have any questions, please feel free uh, to let me know your questions and you can contact me by email or by LinkedIn at any time. Thank you, Patricia. I really like your presentation because this is so real for a lot of the, the companies out there and, and especially kind of the, the companies that have something, some physical part and, and they yes. have been manufacturing <laughs> companies or some kind of like technology manufacturing and you have these kind of maybe really, really big customer organizations and, and maybe some legacy pro processes uh, yes. underneath there. So I have a question um, related to that because in my experience with, with some of the customers I've worked with, which are like similar customers and yours, there is a very kind of, um, there's a fear of letting the customers actually manage their own data. And, and the self service is like a big no-no. <laughs> and like exactly. maybe later, maybe in like five years, because our customers are sold as old fashioned. Yes. Has this <laughs> come up with you and how did you fight that? <laughs> Well, we try to think exactly on that and present a solution that already offers that security. And internally, uh, what we're doing, and that's exactly why we're going through the APIs. With the APIs, you can actually separ separate it, right? So they're not exactly connected directly to your system, but with the mm. APIs, they are connecting in a separate layer. And exactly that's why it's secure, because they are creating and manage the account, but they mm. are not managing your tool. So yeah. you still need to give them some kind of, a, you, you give them apparently, so for the customer itself, you are giving them all the control. Mm. But actually, they're creating the accounts and behind this process, there's an all approval process and they can only access this layer of the information. So they will yeah. never actually access your database. So they won't access your data. So they just have this small, let's say, um, run a layer that they can access and through there do the management of account. So it's very secure because you can actually tailor that and give them access only exactly to what they need mm. instead of opening, because I think that's the biggest challenge, right? So yeah, that, that do I give them access? Yeah, and, and talking about access, that is the question of the day. Like, how do you give them the access? Is it automated based on some account data or something? Or is there like a human process there before they uh, get access to their own? No, own, so with the, you know? self, with the self-service portal, uh, it's like, for example, imagine when you, uh, for example, want to create an email account. Right. Mm. So you just enter your information and this information is verified to the background. Right. Yeah. But you are not exactly accessing that thing directly. Yeah. So what happened is that through this Internet page, uh, you give them the access to actually request the account. And with mm. this actual request of the account, then you validate that the information is correctly. And because you're connecting through the API. So technically, what happened is that the API is communicating with your identity and access management tool. And your identity and access managed tool is what in reality is giving them the access that is yeah. needed and reporting back to the API saying, yes, this person can have the access. So that's why it's a two layer and that's why it's very secure. So yeah. because it has this separation, right? Where they do have the access, but they're not exactly inside. 
and there is this verification. Uh, with the technologies nowadays, there's very little manual intervention. The only thing mm -hmm. is the approvals itself because you can make the whole automation. And for yeah. example, if you are ex ex accessing an external, uh, uh, even a third application, imagine you get the account creation through the API, from the API it goes to identity management, from the identity management goes to the other application, and then the user gets a direct access to that application. And everything yeah. is done through the behind. Yes, and you can even like, in some conditions, you can even do the approvals automatically if you have exactly. that data. And even, logic. Yeah. Exactly, and even the level, as like I was saying, for example, you can imagine that you have um, one specific customer uh, that uh, they need going to need to create 50 accounts. Mm -hmm. You're not going to create 50 approvals, but you can select one specific person that you have a really high uh, relationship of trust, right? And say, okay, I'm going to uh, nominate you as the management of this account. So you are responsible yes. for every account that it's approval here. And we only approve your account. Yeah, and then that, you that have to exactly. be responsible. <laughs> yeah, that is exactly the, the way that it should go. And, and what is exactly. typically advised, it's, it's just a matter of like really understanding that if you can't trust your, your customer <laughs> person, you <need. laughs> then yeah, exactly. I mean, you're in, in such a trouble and your customer, your system should just be so safe that they can't screw up. So that's, exactly. that's the point. But uh, very good and, and very important uh, what you are talking about here because uh, the, the problem of APIs and, and kind of using APIs safely is, is so much about who has access to what and who yes. is using which identity. And this is so much better way than having just one system identity, for example, exactly. one co company specific identity for those API calls. So, hey, thank you, Patricia, really. Thank uh, you. This was a really good presentation and I'm thank sure it's, it's going to be useful for lots of people. <laughs> but, thank hey, you, appreciate it. No problem. Thank you, bye. Thank you, thank you very much, bye-bye.